Ryzen 7000, Intel 13th gen, especially the 3900K. In the last few years, we've made real progress, but with that progress came heat. Serious heat. Seriously, that 3900K is impossible to cool down. So it's time for a new generation of coolers that can finally handle these pocket-sized ovens. Meet the Lian Li Galahad 2 Trinity Performance in 360, Lian Li's attempt of finally stopping this temperature madness. We got a 32mm thick red, Lian Li's 28mm LCP fans at 3200 RPM, thicker tubes, inner diameter thicker, but most importantly, dual wave fins on that rack. Lian Li's Galahad series of AIOs was always known to be among the very best, and going from the original to Galahad 2, they made some very interesting changes. Overall, there are three different Galahad 2s. The regular Trinity, the exact same but with SL Infinity fans, which you can bet your ass I will recreate because I got the fans, and this 360mm only Galahad 2 Trinity performance. According to Leon Lee, and I say according because I don't have the original Galahad to verify, but they made the fins inside the copper plate almost half as thick and they spaced them out a tiny bit more. The seal above saw some changes too, making a lot more sense now, but mainly with way bigger inlets. And this also shows on the pump, which by the way, looks like it's going to hurt you. One of the most important changes came from the tubes. Now they have an inner diameter of 7mm compared to the original 5.8, which means a lot more water going through. And the fans got the same treatment, a treatment in form of liquid crystal polymer 28mm thick 32 RPM monsters. No, they are not exactly P28s. They look a bit like P28s, but they are a lot better. But that's not all, because we got a dual wave designed radiator. The regular Galahad 2 radiator has a normal looking 20 FPI red. Everything fine. But the performance one, this one, has a dual wave 19 FPI one. I have no idea how you would compare the two. I doubt that you can just double the m amount of thin real estate just because it's, it does it twice. It's, it definitely looks like much more. And all of that translates into one thing, performance. So let's first have a look at that. For the very first time, we are going to use the results from our new 3900K benchmark machine. Using this thing, we created three scenarios, a low workload at 120 watts, a mid to high workload at 250 watts, and a god tier, with good luck of cooling this down at permanent 320 watts. To get our numbers, we switch between the different modes and BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reached what it can do over a permanent time span. This is especially important for AIOs because it, it takes some time for the water to really heat up to the point where it just stops. And then we gradually lower down the fan speed in 10% steps while the pump is always fixed to 100% and we note down the CPU package temperature average over 2 minutes and deduct the air temperature just in front of the fans to get the temperature above ambient at any given fan setting. For the noise, we now position the cooler on a table and the dB meter exactly one meter away on its own tripod. Then again pump at 100% and fan speed starting off at 100 and then going down from there measuring the decibels at any given fan speed. Let's begin with the low workload. While the CPU did barely anything, the cooler did a hell of a lot. At 26.6 degrees C above ambient at max fan speed, the Lian Li Galahad 2 Trinity Performance, that's a really long name, but it managed to outperform everything we had the time to retest on a new benchmark machine. 
every Arctic liquid freezer, even Be Quiet's air coolers, everything, even the Alpha Cool Core Ocean T38 in both 420 and 360. Now, just a few things on this workload. Actually, 120 watts is more what you would expect during like a heavy gaming session. And the truth is, it's, it's just not a lot of heat. So even if this is a pretty good way of testing, let's say, mid-tier air coolers, um, like just look at the nice line of Be Quiet coolers, which makes so much sense, for AIOs or like ultra high performance coolers, things can start to get messy. Just look at the Alpha Cool Core series. The 420 was outperformed by the 360, just by an inch, true, it's margin of error at this point, but it doesn't make sense. And the truth is, there isn't enough heat so that these coolers can actually do what they are supposed to do, or that differences between good and very good are not blurry or even reverse, but they are like, consistent. And we can best see this on the noise to performance graph. Even though the new Trinity Performance managed to keep the absolute best noise to performance ratio out of everything, except for this mini measurement point right here, it did something very weird here. It became hotter and then it became colder, which doesn't make a lot of sense considering the fan speed was pushed down and down and down. Um, that's just what happens if you got such an oversized cooler with a miniature workload. Things start to get messy. However, even if it does weird stuff, the Galahad performance clearly won this round. On a short side note, you may wonder where the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 is. Clearly, it's the most interesting comparison for the Galahad. Well, shit. There is a new one on the way, and I'm sending mine in to test whatever the hell happened there, because it, it sounds awful, and the th between using it last time where it worked perfectly fine, and this time was my holiday. It was not used. I have no clue what happened there. It worked fine, I put it into the box, came back from holiday, I slapped it back on to retest on the benchmark machine and it was gone. I have, I have no clue what happened there. But I need to leave it out because I could never trust whatever number comes out of this thing now. Moving on to higher workloads at 250 watts. At full speed, the Trinity Performance managed to do it again. With 53 degrees C above ambient on the chip, the performance model beat the best next thing by 1.3 degrees C. And now the list also starts to make a lot more sense, like the Alpha Cool 420, which is now in front of the 360. But what about the Noise 2 performance? There, things started to shift, although we can still see some of these weird bends at the top of the lines when we push the fan speed down, it's only the 360s and 420 AIOs that can get the temperature to something that resembles being cool. But what we can also see here is that coolers that were previously a lot better begin to get saturated, whilst other ones start to come closer because they can go on and on and on. Like for example the Core Ocean T38 420. For the top 50%, the Galahad clearly wins, like by a mile, but once you push the fan speed on both coolers below that level, the Alpha Cool actually starts to take the lead. Not by a long shot, but still. Something interesting also happens with the non-performance Trinity. It can't get the temperature nearly as low as the performance one, but for a brief moment, the normal Trinity is actually quite a lot quieter, making the overall experience, thus than the noise to performance ratio, a bit better. But now let's get to the scenario that we specifically made to test coolers of this capacity. And here I also need to add, for every scenario until now, we are or we were stopping the benchmarks as soon as the chip reached 100 degrees C. But for the permanent 320 watts workload, we needed to push that number up to 110. Not because I like to torture my chips, well I do, but that's on my private time. No, it's because there is no cooler that made that possible. So the list would have been empty. At 320 watts, half of our list is already gone, and all we are left with are big ass 360s and 420 AOs. But for those who are left, the gap between 
I can manage it quite well and I can somehow make it happen has become substantially bigger. Take the regular performance Trinity. The difference has gone from barely 1 degree at 250 watts to 4 degrees. That's a lot of degrees. Also interesting is the difference to the Arctic Liquid Freezer 420. Thanks to the bigger workload, we are now able to see that there is a limit to what the 38mm radiator can do. Probably not due to the radiator, but like the, the uh, cold plate and the pump, but you can see the overall product cannot handle as much at, at a certain point. It seems like that much denser double wave radiator was a good idea. Not even talking about the pump and cold plate improvements, which are probably the reason why the Arctic Liquid Freezer gives up at some point. Ignoring where this comes from, but at 72.7 degrees C above ambient, the Galahad managed to keep the best temperature we have seen so far. And based on my memory of my old list, and my imagination skills of where this will be going once I fill the list because there was nothing better than a liquid freezer for 20 before and I, I, I just sincerely doubt that I will re-benchmark anything that we have tested previously that will be better than this. This is probably the best I have right now. But what about the Noise 2 performance? Well, it's interesting. Similarly to the 250 watts workload, the Galahad performance has the upper hand at the very high fan speeds. But then it was overtaken by the Alpha Cool T38. The regular Galahad 2, on the other hand, never reached what the performance was capable of doing. From start to finish, it was far behind. For the Arctic 420, on the other hand, that one was a, a kind of a surprise to me. The reason why the line ended up being as short as it is, is because there are only three measuring points until the chip went above 110 degrees C. So far, as far as performance is concerned, it's it's damn. There is nothing better, or at least I haven't seen anything better until now, for raw brute performance. And for the upper fan speeds, once you push it slightly down, the thicker ones that are more spaced out will start to come very close, and sometimes they will even have, have the upper hand. But for if, if you want everything, this is everything. But let's now talk a bit about the AIO itself. The Galahad 2 performance comes in a relatively standard AIO package. Some images, a bit of specs, and inside we'll find a bit of an unusual thing. Like the AIO, instead of requiring us to assemble it, it comes with the fans pre-mounted. A bit of a treat in my opinion. Then we got the usual mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, and we got a whole bunch of caps. And those caps are pretty cool. You see, although this is supposed to be the performance version and Lee and Lee performance things usually are black, the pump cover is still shining in every direction. However, if you don't like to have that Lee and Lee text on there, what you can do is rotate it and remove the whole cap, get blinded by the ridiculous amount of LEDs, and then take either the so-called dazzle mode or sink hole cover. Quite cool. To play with all of this RGB, we actually do not need any additional cables. What we can do is connect the SATA power for pin PVM and USB 2.0 header coming out of the water block. And from there, we can already use Lee and Lee's L3 software to set all the color modes and whatnot. As in every other Lee and Lee review, I'm not going to go deep into the L Connect 3 thing, but to summarize it, you can do everything. It's, it's very, very customizable. You can set different modes to different parts of the product. It's a do whatever the hell you want thing. However, what we can also do is add this cable to the mix. This can be connected to one of the corners of the pump, the bigger one. From there, we can connect the PVM cable coming out of the last fan of the radiator. If we do this, we can control all of the fake P28 fans from within L-Connect. Pretty cool if you ask me, but you don't need to do it. You can also just connect them to your motherboard and or to the CPU fan header and let the motherboard handle it. Additionally to that, this cable also gives us the option to add these Li and Li RGB extensions to the fan and then hook everything up into L-Connect 3. That's a possibility. If that's what you are looking for, it's great. 
Now, another huge disclaimer. If you are one of those who are looking to skip all of the software, yes, there is one of these proprietary to 3-pin ARGB connectors. Yes, but I have not found a way to make it work. It just doesn't light up. No idea why, but as far as I was able to take it, it was either L3 or no control. It's really that simple. If I ever find a way in the future, I will make sure to comment it down below and pin it, so uh, you can check there, but so far no idea. Now let's get to the fans. I keep saying fake P28s because they are fake P28s. At the first glance, they might look like them because of the corners, but they are actually not. They are still made out of LCP though. But those here, they are spinning at 3200 RPM at 6.99 mm of H2O and up to 108.29 CFM. And although they share a lot of, lot of design similarities on the frame, for example, their fan speed limiter only has a high and a low mode, limiting down to 2300 RPM, and they have a completely different fan wing design. And performance, they perform a lot freaking better. It's like a better fake version. But before I forget it, let's quickly cover the installation way for either AM4, AM5, LGA 1700, 1200 and every 1150. For Intel, we can leave the pre-installed bracket on the pump. We only need to either take the LGA 17 or 1200 backplate and stick it behind the motherboard. From there, we take the spacers and shove them onto the outsticking rods with the thin side facing down. For AMD, we need to take it off and replace it with the AMD model. From there, AMD ones need to be clamped in using the original retention brackets. And for Intel, we need to slab it on and then screw the whole thing down. But what about thermal paste? Well, for this one, Li and Li has a bit of an extra. Inside the mounting hardware bag, we will also find two of these stickers. We can pry one of them off and glue it onto the gold plate and then just make sure that all of these holes are empty because sometimes they pull out like the leftover sticker part and then it's, it's just covered. However, then we can apply some thermal paste and distribute it with the included mini shovel. And after pulling it off, voila, we created a mess. It's a nice gimmick and we've used it, or we used two of these stickers for all of our Galahad 2 benchmarks and we benchmarked three runs on two different AIOs uh, so six in total and we didn't see any difference like it's the same thing it's it's a nice gimmick but if you apply enough thermal paste a dot will do fine too it this just creates a mess okay performance covered installation covered rgb covered what about the quality well for this one lia lee really did come up with some really nice things in theory, the tubes are about 400 mm long, which isn't too long, it's, it's okay. However, on both sides of the pump and radiator end, they are adjustable with these enormous rotatable 45 degree fittings. They are really hard to adjust, but once they are set, they will stay the way it's it works amazingly well. However, the thing is, because of the 45 degree bend on, on the red side, it feels like they are so much longer. Probably because you can already angle the tube in a way that you would usually need to do a bend to get to. And that makes the whole thing so much more efficient uh, for the tube length and it just feels incredibly long. Then we also got this little strap we can use to tie the tubes together. Okay, nice gimmick. Other than that, we got the usual high quality stuff like nice sleeving on the tubes, sturdy pump combo, red feels solid, the fans feel more like T30s than any other fan I saw until now. So quality wise, the Galahad 2 performance is an amazing AIO. All in all, it just feels solid as hell. Performance wise, it's the very best we've seen so far. Customizability, it's, it's a Lee and Lee software thing, do whatever you want with an army of LEDs. They brought a ton of new things to the table that we previously did not know, like for example, the, the rotatable fitting here. So Lee and Lee really did a tremendous job in here. And things like i9 13th gen, R9 7000, this thing can handle them. And the only question remaining to be answered is the price. And honestly, at 170 US dollars MSRP, it is really not that bad, at least not for like the best AIO I've seen so far. 
So from our side, it's a recommendation for sure, no doubt there. One of, if not the best performers so far. And if black isn't your thing, there is also a white one. Anyway, I think this should be it for Lee and Lee and their newest Galahad 2 Trinity performance. At this point, a huge thank you to Lee and Lee for sending it over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to pay a scientist to find out what this cable does, because there is no motherboard RGB sync button on the pump, and there needs to be a way to use it, and, and somebody gotta find it out. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Gelit Liquid 240 AIO. It might not be the best, but it got a temperature sensor. But you will never guess what it measures. It's not the CPU temp or the water temp. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.